Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Valheim, shall we? With a complete beginner's guide here at the very end of 2022. Well, I've been playing this game a ton, and I think it's fantastic. I started a few months ago. I really had no idea uh, what to expect from the game, except that it was a kind of survival crafting experience, but it's a lot more than that in the sense that it has its own complete vibe, aesthetic, and sensibility that set it apart from other games and really make it individual. So I thought what I'd do is create a guide that is a non-spoilery experience where we start a brand new character and I'm going to walk you through the game. And what I'm going to do is basically just set the basics and the foundations you need to go and explore and experience the game on your own with a more sure footing. Now when I started, I um, was kind of clueless as to many of the game's concepts and I've been lucky enough to have a ton of amazing people come into the YouTube videos and give me feedback and advice uh, for how to better understand the game and enjoy it. And so I'm going to take my trial and error experience and then complement that with all of the amazing advice I've been given to try and present a very beginner-friendly, non-spoilery tutorial. So if you'd like to play along by starting a new game or just watch to see if this is the kind of game you might want to try out, I really think this will be a guide for you in the sense that I'm not going to min-max, I'm not going to tell you the fastest way to do anything. In the spirit of this game of just awe and exploration and seeing what lies next on the tech tree or around that corner or behind that tree, I'm going to try to just keep it as um, open as possible so that you get the fundamentals of the game without um, ruining any of the joy of exploration and discovery that you'll get on your own playthrough so without further ado i've made a new character um and i'm calling in comp tutorial and i'm just going to start and i'm going to actually create a new world um for this now i will say at this point um, i have another world and another play if you're interested in seeing me boot up the game for the very first time and watch um, my let's play series it's over 40 episodes long at this point um, i will put a link in the description below if you want to see how uh, i have progressed and watch further but uh, be warned it will be um, spoiling content as as it goes maybe not at the beginning but as it moves it will um, but at the same time you can see all of my legitimate reactions to trying to figure the game out if that interests you all right so we're gonna create a separate world from that i'm gonna call it tutorial it's got a different seed and we're gonna say done okay and i'm just going to change nothing and i'm gonna just say start Long ago, the All-Father Odin united the worlds. He threw down his foes and cast them into the Tenth World, then split the boughs that held their prison to the World Tree and left it to drift, unanchored, a place of exile. For centuries, this world slumbered uneasily, but it did not die. As glacial ages passed, kingdoms rose and fell out of sight of the gods. When Odin heard his enemies were growing once again in strength, he looked to Midgard and sent his Valkyries to scour the battlefields for the greatest of their warriors. Dead to the world, they would be born again in Valheim. And that is what we are. The greatest of warriors being born again in Valheim. And here we are being carried by an enormous raven you could see the storm the lightning and down below as the lightning flashes the treetops of the world where we will be cast asunder we're getting lower now watch out for the trees please mind the branches ouch all right so here we are 
on the surface of a new world, and we're dripping with water. Now, I'm going to talk to you about what we see on the screen here. I am playing on PC, so I'm using a mouse and keyboard. I find it to be easier to use a mouse and keyboard than a controller. I started using a, a controller and didn't like it um, for the building aspect of the game, for the precision of it. Now, looking at the top of the screen in the upper left, you can see I have a torch. And if I push one, I will pull out a torch. That is the only item I have right now that I am equipped to a hotbar with. And if I push one again, I will put it away. So as you get more items and equip them to um, the number keys that are your action bar, you can easily access them by pushing their number. And then you can push that number again to put it away. Instead of pushing one to push the torch away, you can also push R to put whatever you have out in your hand away. Um, and that's uh, my favorite way of doing it because you don't have to remember what key you, know, you currently have equipped out of you know all of the numbers at your disposal you can just push r and quickly put away what you want in the upper right you'll see that i have a status ailment wet it's going away as it stopped raining and now i'm no longer wet you see my character is no longer dripping you'll see that there is a mini map in the upper right it says meadows and that reflects what biome you're in in the game right now i'm in the meadows if i push m it will display my world map and you can kind of see i do have some of the map exposed from the flight path i took to get here and everything else in brown is the fog of war that will be uncovered as i move around and map the area and that will also be reflected on the mini map in the lower left, you'll see that I have three boxes that are empty with a fork below them. Those are your food buffs. We don't have any food that we're eating right now, so we're receiving no buffs. The um, red bar with the red symbol and the 25 is my health. I currently have 25 health, um, and if that drops to zero, I die. And right here in front of me is my buddy the raven that actually carried me in that has gotten smaller and he brings tidings the yellow exclamation point above his head indicates he has something important to tell us and all you have to do is walk up to hugan you can see his name right there and press e to talk um and hugan is kind of like a tutorial bird so whenever you encounter something new um, in the game, he will usually come out and have something to say to you to help explain what's going on. You'll see him quite frequently in the beginning of the game and less and less as you move on and there's less to learn. So, he says, Welcome to the Tenth World, Warrior. I am Hugin, sent here to guide you in your travels. The megalith surrounding you are the sacrificial stones. They represent the Forsaken which you must slay in order to ascend to Valhalla. Okay, so look around, and these are the megaliths, and these are also called the sacrificial stones. Now, the Forsaken are, you can kind of think of them as bosses that you're going to have to go defeat uh, in order to beat the game. So these are the bosses you see them in many games begin in a fashion like this where you kind of get a sense of what's around you like Mega Man perhaps how many bosses you've got to take down and these are the ones that we need to take down now and Hugin has disappeared and now he wants to tell me something new and I can talk to him and he says this stone is a veg vizier these magical stones were scattered throughout the lands by Odin as signposts pointing toward the ritual grounds of the Forsaken. If inspected closer, this one will reveal the summoning place of Ikthir, your first prey. He is a mighty beast, so you need to properly arm yourself before even attempting to defeat him. Right, we do have to properly arm ourselves, okay? And 
if I look at this Veg Vizier um, and I push E to register the location, you'll see that now what has happened is on the map, right down here, it says Ekthir. By the way, I'm pronouncing all of these words incorrectly, so I apologize in advance. It's just how I say them. And you can see it's marked right down here on the map in an area I haven't been yet. But what this means is if I wanted to go fight, the first of the Forsaken, this is where it would be. And this is kind of showing you, hey, here's the first boss. But as Hugan just said, we need to properly arm ourselves. We are not equipped for that. We are standing here nearly naked with a torch. That's not going to do it. So if I take a look around, okay, um, you can see that these stones, you can see the trophy hook, and you can even read the sacrificial stone itself to get a sense of, you know, some of the lore surrounding this particular Forsaken. And I'll leave these for you to read if you like. But for now, it's time to start doing the business of getting ourselves stronger and getting a shelter for the night. Because as you can see, this is not a very warm place to sleep on this stone circle surrounded by these imposing sacrificial stones. I'd like to have something a little cozier and I'd like some pants perhaps even a cape maybe a weapon things like that so when I mouse over this branch right here on the ground you can see it says branch you press E to pick it up I'm moving around using WASD to move because like I said I'm using mouse and keyboard I'm looking with the mouse and I am moving my character with WASD just like that you can jump with the space bar. And did you see that? It says skill improved jump one. Whenever you do anything in this game, just about you are going to be raising skill in that category of action. So if I push tab, okay, tab opens up my inventory. I can see everything that I'm carrying. I right now have a rag tunic. That's the shirt that I'm wearing. It says, humorously, better than nothing. And yes, it's better than nothing, but only slightly. I have the torch that I began with, and I have the, the, the stick or the wood that I just picked up. On the right is my defense value, one. And here is my weight. I'm carrying five out of the 300 pounds that I can be carrying. Now, if you mouse over something for example this torch it gives you a whole bunch of very useful information in the tooltip like how much it weighs its current durability how much damage it does and what type of damage it does it does blunt damage and it does fire damage how much stamina it takes to use it as a weapon how much i would block if i were to try to block with it how much force of the incoming damage i could block what kind of bonus damage I would get if I successfully parried when using the torch as a weapon, how much I would knock back, um, how much damage I'd do backstabbing with it, and does it reduce my movement speed to have it out? So um, you can see all of this great information on the tooltip, mouse over it, and whatever relevant information you need is displayed there, some flavor text and some weight only on the wood. Now with the wood, you can see that it stacks up to 50. So I can have 50 pieces of wood in one stack and they each weigh two pounds. Now on the right side of the tab screen, there is a bunch of very useful information. Now we default to the crafting screen. Right now, all I can craft is a club. I will tell you this. Did you see when I picked up the stick, it gave me a bunch of recipes on the screen. Those were all things that it was telling me that I could start to be able to build. So gathering items and crafting items is how you unlock new recipes, new ideas, new things that you can do. So 100% what you want to do to progress in this game is to explore, find new items to pick up, use the ideas you get from those items to craft new items, which will unlock new things for you to get then you will be, um, build workstations that you can build further items at, very much like Minecraft, for example. 
and then you can upgrade those to build more things. So that is kind of your path. So you want to pick up everything you see. You want to try to build everything that you can, right? So right now, we definitely want to build a club. Not only will that help give us new ideas, potentially unlock new crafting recipes, it'll also be a weapon that we can use. And right away, you see it does 12 blunt damage, which is uh, significantly more blunt damage than our torch is going to do. So that's fantastic, but we need, it tells you right down here what it takes to craft it. It needs six wood to craft this, and we can craft it with our bare hands. We don't need um, a workbench or anything to do that. We can do it with just what we have. Now, if I go here and click in the upper right on this panel, if I click on the raven, this is um, the Valheim Compendium. And this is basically everything that Hugen has told us, as well as any important tutorials that the game has shown us. So, for example, active effects. This is telling us what active effects we have on us right now. And there is nothing. If we did have an active effect, you would see an icon in the upper right corner that would be displayed um, that would either be a buff or a debuff. We had the wet debuff earlier when it was raining, and that was an active effect. Here's the message log, okay? And you can click on this to just see everything. This is incredibly important because um, things can happen very quickly in this game. And if you ever are unsure of something that the game flashed you as a notification, you can come to the log and get it. Like, so for example, just from the very beginning, it was telling me, you are wet, you are wet, you're dry. And then it told you, oh, Hugin talked to you. It says, hey, I put that location on the map for you. And then when I picked up the stick, I learned um, uh, all about these, new, uh, these items that I already have, which is my torch, my rag tunic, um, the material wood that I gathered, and I got a new crafting recipe of a club. And then it said you added wood. So, for example, the reason I show you this is because it flashed like all four of these things at the same time on the screen, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, it might have only been two of them, but it was more than one. And sometimes you'll get a whole bunch of this, and it's hard to really register like everything that you've been shown. So just come back to the message log whenever that happens, and you can scroll back through and see what you missed and just kind of double check. Then if you want to see the text from any of Hugin's dialogues with you, um, you can do that by clicking here. I'm going to click close. On this screen, okay, these kind of like interlocking triangles, you can click it and it says skills when you mouse over it. And this is what I was talking about with jumping, okay? So, right now, I have jumping, clubs, blocking, and swords as skills. As you get more tools, more things that you're doing, more skills will open up. This tells you your current skill level, okay? So I have a skill level of one right here. And this bar is telling you how much progress you have overall towards maxing out your jump or your clubs, all right? And if you mouse over these skills, it gives you a kind of a description of what it covers, right? So jumping is like how high you can jump, clubs or how much damage you do with clubs and so on. Now I'll close this. Over here, I can click on trophies. I have none. And here I can click on take damage from other players friendly fire if you're playing cooperative i'm playing solo so that doesn't matter to me so i'm going to push escape now um you can see time is passing uh, i'm not pausing the game so let's we have a lot of stuff to do so let's move fast i'm going to pick up the stone and as i do that boom new material stone new crafting recipe you see how quickly those shot over to the side of the screen wait a minute what did i just see push tab go um, to your log right here and go down new material stone new crafting recipe stone axe new crafting recipe hammer okay so now you can see in the crafting screen i can make a stone axe if i have five pieces of wood and four stone i can also make a hammer um, if i have three pieces of wood and two stone and all of these items do different things uh, so the hammer is not uh, something you attack with, you use it to build with. So you're not going to be able to do any building until you make this hammer. The axe you can fight with, I actually like fighting with an axe quite a bit. 
but it's also what you used for, as it says here, tree felling, what you used to chop down trees. Now notice with this weapon it does slashing damage, whereas the club does blunt damage. Most enemies in this game will have a weakness to a particular damage type, so you generally want to have lots of different weapons at your disposal so you can exploit a weakness of an enemy. Alright, I'm going to pick up this branch and let's get crazy. I'm picking up everything that I see, stones, and Hugo wants to talk to me. He says, take stock of your inventory. Most items must be crafted. However, due to your recent departure from Midgard, you will have to recall the true shape of objects. Just pick things up and it will all come back to you, I'm sure. My lesser brother, Moonin, tells me one can fashion a stone axe out of wood and stone. So what he's explaining here is a little bit of story and a little bit of function. So number one, the story is basically, I was in Midgard, which is like, you know, the world that we're in right now, or at least, you know, the human world. And then we've passed away. We were a great warrior, and now we're here in Valheim, I suppose. And we're being tested to see if we can perhaps ascend. Um, and because of that process of, you know, dying, we've forgotten some things. So when we pick something up, we get our memory jarred and can learn all sorts of crafting recipes. So that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Now, uh, you can see the light is waning, so let's move, move, move. I'm running through, and here's a branch. It might seem, at first, as you move around, a little bit awkward to find the items that you're looking for. Here's a stone on the ground, but when you mouse over them, you'll pick them up. You'll notice that this is nothing. If when you mouse over it, nothing happens, this is a beech tree, okay? Then that means that you can't do anything with it. Now, what if I wanted to get this tree? What if I punch it? If I try to chop down this tree by punching it, like I'm playing Ark Survival Evolved or something, I can't do that. I can't chop this tree down. You see the zero damage number? That means you are not damaging this with this weapon, and it's a waste of time. So let's skip it. Now, if you want to move around fast, you can push shift and you start sprinting. And when I do that, you'll see below me, there is a yellow stamina bar that appears. All right. Oh, look at this. Dandelions. If you want your stamina to fill back up, all you have to do is just let go of shift and just walk around and it will fill back up. And then you can run. And every time you're running, you are leveling up. Let me show you on my skills, your um, running skill. See, so this red bar is telling you I'm filling it up. The yellow bar, the little slice here, is like your level out of max level. And this red bar is kind of the experience as you raise. Because I punched, I've unlocked the fist skill. Um, and so on. Now, I'm going to just keep walking around and picking things up. It's, here's a stone I can pick up. Here's another one I can pick up. And can I craft anything? I can now craft a hammer. So I have enough wood and stone to craft myself a hammer, so I will. Bam. Click on craft. You'll see the bar fill up, and now we made it. So now, we can do some pretty cool stuff. Look at all the recipes that we just got. And Hugin wants to come talk to us. Run. Level up. You have crafted a hammer. With this tool, you will raise mighty halls and towering fortifications. Start by building a workbench. This, in turn, will enable you to construct other things. Indeed. So, just keep gathering what you can. Dandelion, sure. Dandelion, sure. Dandelion doesn't actually, if I tab over it, it just says a dandelion. We're not actually going to be doing much with a dandelion right now, but I just like to get into the habit of picking up everything that I can, uh, especially early on. All right, so let's look around for some more branches. If I want branches, good place to look for them is probably by trees, and you feel cold. So when night comes, I just got cold because I'm not near a fire. Now, check this out. I'm going to push tab. I'm going to go over here um, to the compendium, and I'm going to go to active effects, and it says I'm cold. What does being cold do? gives me 50% less health regeneration, 25% less stamina regen, and 25% less ETR regen. ETR are like 
kind of special abilities that you get later on. We don't have that right now, so we don't have to worry, but these are bad things. So this is a significant debuff that we don't want. Hey, look at this. This is a raspberry bush. If I pick up these raspberries, bam, I can just click on all these bushes and gather them up. Now it's dark, so let's get out our torch so we can see a little bit better. And look at all these raspberries. Pick them up. Pick them up. All right, beautiful. Now, I'm going to... Um, if you heard that sound and saw that in the background, there was a deer that was scared away by us. I'm going to push tab, and I'm going to mouse over the raspberry, and I'm going to talk to you about food. Now, if this was your actual game and you were playing it, okay, you would be progressing much faster than me. I'm stopping to talk to you, and you'll notice that the game is not stopping. So, unfortunately for us, time is moving, and it's night. Um, but in your experience, you might be able to gather enough materials to build an axe and a campfire and stuff like that. Um, but for now, we can't do that. Now, what I can do, though, is talk to you about food. Food is so important in this game, I cannot state it enough. I didn't understand how important food was when I first started playing. I kind of thought, like... It was a temporary buff like it is in most games, like in Stardew Valley or something, and it's not that big of a deal. No, food is everything in this game, and or at least it's a huge part of it. So if I right-click on this, for example, I'm going to eat it, and then it's going to give me 7 bonus health and 20 bonus stamina. So it will raise my health by 7, and it raised my stamina by 20 for... It says duration 10 minutes for 10 minutes. It'll also heal me, okay? Um, so I'm going to right-click on it, and you'll notice immediately my health bar goes up and my stamina bar goes up. And now right here it says for 10 minutes I have this raspberry buff. It shows you what food you ate, tells you how long, and it goes in this food thing. You can have three different food buffs, but different. I can't eat a raspberry three times because you could only get the raspberry buff once. I would need to eat a different food source to get different buffs. Now, this fork right here is yellow, and the forks are color-coded red, white, or yellow, meaning what they favor. It's just a shorthand. This gives you mostly stamina, so it's yellow to reflect that it gives you stamina. If the fork is red, that means it's going to give you a lot of hit points, a lot of health. So it's going to have a red fork, and a white fork is like a balance of health and stamina. So anything in your inventory that has a fork, you can right-click to eat it. Okay? Fantastic. Now, um, Hugo wants to talk, and he says, Be wary of the weather. When the temperature drops at night, or if you're wet, you'll suffer from being cold. This reduces your stamina regeneration. Seeking shelter by an open flame is your best option when this happens. Indeed. So what we need are some sticks and some rocks. Now, how many rocks do I have? I have five, actually. So what does five rocks mean? Check this out. You'll notice that if I, I go to my log, I learned how to, um, once I built the hammer, I learned a bunch of things. I learned how to make a campfire, a wood stack, a stone pile, a cooking station, a workbench, all these great things. But you'll see on my crafting screen, none of that shows up. That's because that only shows up if I push... Um, you see how the hammer, once I built it, has been assigned to 2 on my action bar? If I push 2, I will now be holding a hammer. Now this brings up on the bottom center, you'll see, right now I'm repairing, but... If I use the mouse 2, which is right-click, it opens the build menu. From this build menu, okay, I can see all of the recipes that I currently know how to build with a hammer. This is where something like the campfire goes. So the campfire or the wood pile or the stone stack, none of that stuff goes into my crafting screen, my personal crafting screen. It goes to the build menu. So let's we want a campfire so that we can get rid of this cold debuff. But we need two wood to do that. You can see in the bottom center, it shows you the campfire when I mouse over this. Anything that's grayed out means you can't make that right now. You don't have the ingredients. It tells you you have enough stone, but the flashing red number on the wood means you need two wood. So we need to get wood. Now, I'm going to push R to put my hammer away. Generally, when you're walking around, you do not want to have 
um, a tool out if you can avoid it because it um, slows you down or will drain um, extra stamina. And we don't want that. So I'm going to go talk. A tasty morsel. You have found a snack. Consume it to improve your health and stamina. Be aware that before long you will grow hungry again. So try to have at least a couple of different meals ready. Exactly. So you always want to have the food buff on. It is a waste to not have a food buff. You will be so much weaker. So whenever you can, eat. All right. Now, also, whenever you can, hold shift to run around so you can level up your skills. I'm going to pick up this branch. I'm staying close to the sacrificial stones for now. But in general, and hey, we got another branch. In the meadows, you're mostly safe from diabolical enemies, especially if you stay close to to these early on okay now at nighttime lots of nastier things will come out to roost but if you have a torch out most of the enemies at this point in the game will be afraid of this and will run away including the animals okay now i'm going to go ahead and get out my hammer i'm going to right click it and i'm now you can see that the campfire is illuminated because we can build it we have two wood and five stones so i'm going to click on this and now when i left click on the campfire it takes me to this screen what can you see? You can see a campfire in front of me with yellow dots going up. Now what this means is, I, this is where I'm going to build it in the field. But the rocks are red, which means I can't build it here. So I need to find a place where it says I can build it. And once, you can see right here, I can build the campfire here. Because it's not red. Like red means like the ground is not level. It's not a valid place to build it. But once it looks fine, there's no red glow. Then you can left click and build it. Now I'm going to push R to put my hammer away. And now we have a campfire. And if I stand by it, you can see immediately that my cold debuff has gone away. Now, when I look at this, it says fuel 1 out of 10. Meaning this will not burn indefinitely. It needs wood. Alright. Also, in the upper left, you can see my torch. You see the white bar below it? That indicates my durability. The durability on my torch is going down because I'm walking around with the torch out and it's burning out. I'm not swinging it or bashing it. It's going to break just because it's going to burn out. It needs more fuel. So um, just be mindful of that, that you can't always have it around. But now I have a campfire. I have some food. I'm feeling a little bit stronger. Let's go get some more wood, shall we? All right. So the best place to do is just get pick up everything we can. We're going to pick up stones, okay? Um, you can see that there was a bit of a stutter there because the world saved. It By default, um, it auto-saves every 30 minutes. By the way, one thing I do want to talk to you about with the settings, I haven't changed that much, but I'm going to push Escape and I'm going to go to Settings. And I do want to say, um, down here you can see it says Toggle Auto Pickup is the V key. Okay? Now, I'll talk to you about some of the controls, like R to, sh to hide your weapon, E is use, what the different mouse buttons do in combat, um, X is sit down, you can auto run if you want to just do that, tab opens your inventory, M opens your map, you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel or with the period and the comma, um, and I think though I want to talk about auto pickup I have it on push V it says off push V again it says auto pickup on what that means is if there's something on the ground um, like you chop down a tree and some wood falls on the ground and you can just see it right there it will automatically pick it up you don't have to push the button again for example if I turn auto pickup off and I were to um, pick up that branch okay you can see then now the wood goes on the ground and I have to push E to pick it up again. But if I push V for auto pickup, you see how it just zoomed into me? I'll just pick that up. So you only have to, it just saves you a button press. I love it. All right. I'm just picking up as much wood as I can. And now you can see the sun is coming back so I can put this torch away before I destroy it. And we've got enough stuff so I can push tab and we can craft ourselves an axe. No, we can't. We need more branches. And we need more stones. So let's look around for some more stones. You're going to be scouring the world for this stuff early on. 
Later, it's going to be no problem, but early what you want to do is just run around, learn what you can pick up, what you can't, um, and stay close to the sacrificial stones until you have a good assortment of food, items um, to defend yourself with and explore with. And here we go. We've got a bunch of stones. I push tab. Now I can make an axe. I'm going to craft it. Boom. Now I just made a stone axe. And you see it immediately goes to slot three of my action bar. And I push three and I'm going to get it out. And I'm going to go over to a tree. Now let's check out this beech tree right here. You can see I'm right by the sacrificial stones. And I'm just going to click it. And I'm going to start cutting this tree. You can see I do 6.7 damage. I'm actually doing damage to this. I'm leveling up my wood cutting. And because the damage numbers, I'm going to be able to chop this down. But look at this. This is a Grayling. It's an enemy. He has come out. He wants to fight. I'm going to just block him with the right mouse button. I'm just going to swing my axe until we kill this guy. And we blow him up. And he's dropped resin. Okay, so resin is cool. And it's a great item to get. And the graylings drop it. That helps us make more torches. And here comes another guy. Now, why are these bad guys here? They weren't here before. It's the daytime. What you want to think about with this game is that... There are enemies like graylings... They're almost like the Lorax. They respond to violence against the natural world. Or loud noise, I guess I should say. So, when I'm trying to chop down a tree, it's violence against nature. And these guys come. They don't like it. They respond to the sound. And you can expect resistance whenever you do something like chop a tree down. Now, this tree, look at this. It chopped down, but it got kind of stuck up in the branches of the other trees. This happens a lot in this game. I could try to, like, run and kind of, like, push it. But you want to be careful uh, because you don't want it to fall on you. So I'm just going to hit it, and eventually it'll just break. So just keep swinging at this. Our axe skill is just flying up. And now it's falling. And look at that. Do you see what happened there? This is a beautiful thing about the game that you can exploit to your advantage, which is that there's a gravity, inertia, and um, damage from one tree falling into another. This tree fell, and it knocked down another tree. Now, because I have auto pickup on, I just pick up a whole bunch of wood. And we can even do this again and try to get this to fall and knock down another tree. You can do your best to try to trick this process and chop down trees there we go you see that oh my gosh look at that just make sure you don't kill yourself when you're doing this because it's it's dangerous to be a lumberjack but you can see all of the damage that we did you can even like try to push the log and do a little bit of damage like that you know push it let it roll and then just go ahead and go to town so that was a great way for us to just get a whole bunch of wood why do we want a bunch of wood? Because <laughs> you're going to need wood so badly. Now notice my stamina bar at the bottom. And look, my food buff has worn off immediately. Go into your inventory, right click your raspberry or whatever food you have and eat it. Do not go around without your food buff on. All right. Now, you see how I'm swinging my axe. Now, if I swing at the birch tree, it says too hard. Too hard means that this tool will not break it. I need a sharper axe to do this. All right, so the stone axe won't do it. I'm going to cut this right here, break it up. You can even break out the stumps as well if you want. Smack, smack, smack. Level up that wood cutting. Bam. Now, I'm going to show you on my skills. Axes is a skill for fighting. Wood cutting is the skill for chopping down trees. So there's two separate skills that govern that. Um, you know, that are triggered with the axe. All right. Now, I got some birch seeds, which you can use to plant trees if you want to have birch trees around you. And I got a bunch of wood here and some resin. Now, what can I make? I'm going to make um, a torch. I'm going to craft a torch just like that. So I have a backup torch. 
Once this torch runs out, it's done. You can never repair this. It's just going to be done. All right. Now I can also make a club, which I will. Boom. And we've got a new item, a club right here. And this is great for fighting any enemy that does not like blunt damage. All right. And now I'm going to go down here to my little campfire. I'm going to put push R to put my axe away so I can run um, easier. And I'm going to go ahead and get out my hammer. I'm going to right click to open up the build menu and I'm going to go to the crafting tab. You can see there's a misc tab, there's a crafting tab, a building tab, and a furniture tab. Okay. And I'm going to go to crafting and we need to build ourselves a workbench. So I'm going to click workbench. All it takes is 10 wood and an open space. So you see this dotted line? That's kind of showing you like the orientation of pointing. Um, telling you where how it's pointing like how it's laying and what's level and what's what's up some items like campfire want to have clear sky above them and i just built a workbench and all of a sudden a whole bunch of new things just flew up you see all these recipes coming i'm going to push r to put my hammer away and let's talk to hugan and he says you built a workbench the workbench allows you to craft complex items as well as giving you access to lots more building pieces to construct with the hammer indeed so now we can really start building i mean look at all these building recipes that just keep flying in again remember you don't have to uh, commit all that to memory you can just push tab open up the compendium and go ahead to the log scroll down and just see everything that you got or you can go to your workbench and push E. Now, I was talking about the, how the campfire wants to have open space above it. You can enclose a campfire with a roof or something if you want, but if you don't ventilate the smoke, there will be negative effects. So we'll talk about that um, when we get to it, but for now, it's fine to have it out in the open. Um, now, your workbench, if I click E, this does not want to have open sky. It says, I need a roof. So we need to build a rudimentary shed around this so that we can use it. So I'm going to pull out my hammer and I'm going to go to the building tab. This is where all of those recipes went. Okay. I just learned 30 new things, right? I just knew, learned some new things in the mist tab, like these fences. I just learned how to build a bed and a chest and a standing torch. But right now what we want is a wall. Okay, so a wooden wall, you can see that when I click on it, it takes two wood and it needs a workbench nearby. The workbench, do you see the dotted circular line that's going all around from um, basically starting with the workbench in the center of the radius of this circle? Okay, a circle extends out which is the area of influence that's affected by this workbench. So anything within this circle, I can build a wood wall because I am near a workbench. But if I were to walk, walk, walk over here and then step outside this line, you'll see that there's no workbench close enough. I'm not benefiting from it. But if I step in, then the line turns back on. You can see it. If I step out, then the line turns off and you can see it says workbench none. So you need to be close to a workbench. Now, there's no limit to the number of workbenches you can build. So if you want to build something far away, just build another workbench. All right. Now, here's some awesome things about the game that I want to tell you. Number one, when you want to build this wall, okay, you can rotate it with the mouse button like that. All right. Um, you can use shift to turn on or off snapping. Okay. And you can build it on the ground like this if you push x to sit down you can kind of lower things a little bit but it's more important when you have already built something and you're trying to build something below it okay i'm going to push x to stand back up but what i want to show you is this i'm going to build a wall right here just because all right and then a wall takes two wood if i push tab you see i have 25 wood but if I push mouse three, okay, which is for me, it's my middle mouse, that is remove. As you can see, the controls for whatever tool you have are in the lower right, all right? If I push middle mouse, I'll just break that. 
and if I push tab, you'll see I have 27 wood. In Valheim, for most items in the game, you get 100% of your resources refunded. So if you don't like, for example, where your workbench is, you want to move it, just break it and move it, right? If you need to build something over here, build a workbench over there so you can build it outside of your space. And then if you don't want that workbench anymore, just break it and you'll get all your wood back. So just build indiscriminately. Experiment. Have fun. I'm going to build a wall here. Okay. Now I have a wall behind my shed. But I need a roof. So I'm going to build another wall. Now if I aim the crosshairs of the mouse at the edge of the existing wall that's in blue, you see that this will automatically snap to it and be level with it. Now if I push shift, I can build this without having any kind of snapping if I want, like if I want to have them overlap or if I want to build it over here or whatever, but I want this to snap. So I'm going to just point this and build it right there. All right, so now I have a wall here and a wall here and that looks pretty okay. Now what else I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to build this, but I'm going to have it snap, okay? I've aimed it right here. I'm going to snap it, but I want to actually use the mouse wheel to rotate it once it's snapped and just kind of curl this side in for my little shed, right? Now I'm going to right click, go back to the build menu, and I'm going to build a roof. And I'm just going to build this 45 degree thatch roof, okay? I'm going to click on the top of this wall so it snaps there. And I'm going to rotate this so that the roof hangs over my shed. Okay, now I'm going to push R and I'm going to see. And now I have a roof, okay, but it says it's too exposed. So what does that mean? It means I need a little bit more than just this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push, um, get my hammer back out, push 2 right click for my build menu except i'm already on the roof so i'm going to build another roof there okay and then what i'm going to do is right click and i'm going to build a wall and i'm going to just kind of stick it on the end here and i'm going to just swing this in oh, let me stand here it's a little easier now building takes practice it takes time and it might feel a little wonky at first but as you go you're going to get way better at it if it's red, I can't build there. If it's blue, it's going to tell you what it's snapping to, okay? And then you can um, rotate it so you can get the inside where you want it, okay? And I could even stack on top if I wanted to do that, okay? But I don't. I'm going to push R, and I'm going to use my workbench. And now, with these two sidewalls and this roof, this workbench is good to go and then once I open the workbench I get a crafting menu that's like my normal crafting menu but it it takes everything I can make normally without having the workbench like the club and the hammer and then it adds new things like wooden arrows and a hoe okay it also adds an upgrade tab so I can make a better axe club or hammer the number in the upper right corner indicates what level this weapon is all right so this stone axe is level one and if i wanted to level up it would go to this ability these abilities right here now you can mouse over your axe and see like for example right now this level one stone axe um, is 15 slashing damage but the level two is 20. you saw how it says you can eat another bite that's the game telling you that your food buff is gone i could just right click from right here get seven health and 20 stamina by eating and i have 10 minutes left with my berry now i can't upgrade my axe because you can see right down here it says upgrade stone axe to quality two this star means that it requires workbench station level two and my workbench right now is station level one so let's not worry about upgrading right now what we want to do is build everything on this list remember you want to collect everything you can and build everything on the list of every crafting that you can do but i also want to show you this on the left of the workbench, there's this icon right here that's flashing, and it says repair an item. So you'll notice that the durability on my axe, for example, is horrifying. If I click on this, I repaired my rag tunic. If I click it again, I repaired my hammer. If I click on this, I repaired my axe. And now it's turned off because everything is at full durability. Remember, you cannot repair torches. Now, 
This takes no resources. It takes nothing. All you have to do is come to the workbench and just click this until all your stuff is repaired that can be repaired at the workbench and you're good to go. So, how about that? We've got a workbench. We've got a whole bunch of new things we can um, craft. We repaired our stuff. We've got a campfire to keep warm. All right. We know how to gather and we're, we have built ourselves a rudimentary shed. But we obviously, let me put out my hammer. We want to build a house for ourselves, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to build a really simple house. I'm going to select the wall, okay? And I'm not, I'm going to leave this as my like work area. And I'm going to build a house um, over here on, eh, you know, some kind of like semblance of flat ground, okay? Do not worry about the ground being flat right now uh, because uh, you will be able to make alterations to the ground uh, and its level later. We, in fact, can already craft the tool that does that. Um, it is the hoe. But right now, I'm just going to build a house. Now, you notice how when I build that, this wall becomes green. The reason it's green is because it's telling you about its stability. It's a little bit unstable because you see this wall is like not actually touching the ground. So it's getting its strength from the wall that it snapped to, kind of. Um, and all you need to know is that green is fine. But as it gets more precarious, it will go to yellow and then finally red. And you cannot connect anything to a red item or it will break. So you need to be watching your durability. And I'm going to just kind of put this here. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a... Oops. I'm going to build a floor. I'm going to build a 2 by 2 floor. I'm just going to build this here. And I'm going to get out my torch so this is easier for you to see on the inside of, right? So I've built a wall or a floor right here with walls all the way around. I'm going to go back to the hammer and I'm just snapping this in place by aiming it at the edge. You can aim it at the edge of the wall or the edge of the existing floor that you have either way and boom except it says missing requirement because I don't have enough wood. So I'm going to select my axe. I'm just going to run over here and I'm going to chop down a big tree. Bam. You can individually click the mouse or just hold it down by the way. I'm just holding it down and wailing away at this tree. Now notice my stamina. I'm going to have to stand here and wait for this to replenish. And look over here. There is a bad guy. This jerk heard me making all this noise. Chopping down this tree. And he's coming over to investigate. And just generally be angry about what I'm doing. And that's okay. Because we'll fight him. Now remember the knockback of the item. That's kind of why that guy is getting rocked and staggered. Those Darklings are not hard. They're more of just a nuisance, but they help us skill up our axes, and they also give us a little bit of a taste of combat. And they give you resin for torches. So, it's not that bad. By the way, in combat, all I'm doing against those guys, because they're not very hard, is just swinging my axe. You can right mouse button to just hold it to kind of block if you want. If you time it right with the right mouse button, you can parry right when they attack and you can stagger them. You can also, okay, um, right mouse button and push the space bar to do like a sweet combat roll. All right. I'm, gonna, I'm feeling cold, so I'm just going to go over to my fire. And now I'm not cold. All right, but if I get away from my fire, my God, I'm cold. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to select my hammer, and I'm going to... Um, now, if you don't want something selected with the hammer, like you don't want this piece of flooring selected, just right-click, and then just click over here on the hammer icon, and then now it just says repair. And then you can... I'm going to middle mouse button my fire, right? Because I know I'll pick, I'll get all of the ingredients. And I'm just going to walk over here to the house that I'm building. And I'm going to right click with the hammer. Miss. And I'm going to build a fire right here. And then this way. I have some illumination. For this house that I'm building. 
and I will be warm while I'm building it. Now, I also can right click and go to furniture and I can build a standing wood torch. I just need two wood and two resin. And I'm gonna build a standing wood torch right here inside the house to also illuminate our work project. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna to go to building and I'm gonna select the wood floor two by two again. I love to build a wood floor two by two because it just matches up exactly to what you're doing. And now you look at this and good. It was red because I was in the way, by the way. And good. And you see how these are green. They're like kind of upset. Now, if you want to make this more stable, what you can do, but it's green, so it's not going to fall. It's no problem. But if you want, you can right click and you can build something like a wood pole. And you can put it under here as a support and it'll snap in place. Okay. And you can build that right there just to hold this up. If you want, like if you want to put like a little, you know, foundation. In this case, I'm just not really at all worried about this um, because it looks good. Now, wait a minute. What just happened? Well, goodness gracious. Another one of the most important things, a buff. If you sit by your fire, you get a rested buff. So you want to buff yourself with sitting by your fire. And you want to buff yourself with food all the time. You never want to have no food buffs. And you also want to have a rested buff. Okay. Now, I probably should have talked about it earlier. But I've kind of just been talking about building. Now, let's push tab. Let's go to our compendium. And let's go to active effects. And you can see a fire. It's a warm, cozy fire. And it gives us the rested buff once we've sat down long enough next to it you have to get it get it where it says um rested and you have to kind of wait until you get this and this gives us 50 percent health regeneration 100 percent stamina regeneration which is insane okay so this helps us just do everything easier smoother better makes us stronger it's beautiful now inside our house i'm going to keep building i'm going to go here i'm going to build a wall right on the front and now i need to build a door so I'm going to select wooden door right here. Okay. I'm going to build some front steps for us. So I'm going to use these wooden stairs and just kind of snap these here. Like that. So now we have a staircase. Push R so you can kind of just... Nah, it doesn't really smoothly walk onto that. It's The ground is a little uneven, but that's fine. Open the door, pushing E. And now I'm inside this little house. Now this house is incredibly small, but that's okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push two for my hammer and I'm going to build a thatch corner roof like this okay so you can build different roofs you saw I built the straight roof but you can also build a corner roof and you can just kind of snap these right here in the corner and you can see how you can get it like off kilter or true either way is fine but if you want to be a perfectionist you snap it like that and then you go over here and then you see how it's like not doing what I want you have to use the mouse wheel to kind of rotate it until it recognizes that and you get it like this. You could also, if you want, snap it to this, um, but it, it didn't look happy about that. So I'm going to do that. I could eat another bite, immediately push tab, eat yourself a raspberry. Now, I'm going to kind of rotate this like that. Missing requirement, we need more wood. All right, I'm going to push R, no problem. And like I said, early in the game, you're going to need a ton of wood. And that is all part of the process. So I'm going to pick out my axe and I'm gonna pull out a torch. You can use a torch, by the way, while you're chopping wood. Or doing anything with just like a one-handed tool. I'm just going to chop this down, but it is nighttime. So expect resistance from those little dweebs. So I always like to leave myself enough stamina so when one of these guys comes, I can take him. You'll notice them by their eyes, but you see how he's running away from my torch? If I put my torch away, he'll come fight. I often find that it's easier to fight them by putting my torch away just so they don't run away. It can be annoying. All right, now I'm going to keep chopping this tree, and there it goes. By the way, just for um, your edification... The tree will remember how much I've chopped it. So it doesn't recover its health or anything. That's why I was able to kill it in one strike. 
because I was already chopping it. There we go. Now that's a ton of wood. Okay. And I'm going to just kind of put my torch away and run over here. Jump. Do all kinds of fun stuff. I'm going to go back to building. And I'm going to build a roof right here. And I'm going to build a roof like this. Boom. Now, you see how immediately when I step in here, I'm resting. Because I'm comfortable. I'm sheltered, okay? And I'm inside my house. Now, when you rest, you get this rested buff and a shelter if you're inside. You see how I'm, I'm by a fire? That's, you have to be by a fire to rest. I'm sheltered. And I'm resting with a comfort of three. And now you see how my rested debuff, it was before seven minutes, now it's ten minutes. And it's not going down because I'm just like in my house. I'm chilling and it will only go out when I leave the shelter and leave the fire. So like for example, if I step outside of my house and I step outside the shelter, you see how the rested is going down. But if I go back inside and I'm getting the benefit of the fire and of um, the shelter and the resting, as soon as I let this fill back up, it will go up. Now, the reason it's 10 instead of 7 is because as the comfort goes up, you get an extra minute for every point of comfort when you're resting. So um, right now you see it's locked at 10, right? If I'm at comfort 1, I'm at 7. Comfort 2, um, that's not right. I'm sorry. Um, comfort one must be eight then comfort two is nine and comfort three is ten and every comfort point is going to give you an extra minute of this beautiful rested bonus now i want to build myself a bed so i can sleep in here so i'm going to go here and i'm going to go to furniture and i'm going to build a bed and i am going to put this bed i'm going to rotate it around right oh it's saving the world so it's going to take a while right there Okay, and I push R, and I close the door so I can talk to Hugin, and he says, A headrest for the weary. Sleep the night away in your bed and awaken feeling refreshed and full of energy. Another improvement to your home would be some chests where you can store items. It is good practice to always have some spare equipment if something unfortunate should happen to you while exploring. And this is true. If you die, you will start at your spawn point, or if you haven't set it, the sacrificial stones... Um, or near there, and you will have nothing. You'll be naked, and you'll have to go back to your body to get your stuff. You also lose 10% of all of your experience in your skills. So you, like, lose 10% of the level that you've gotten with all of your skills. So it's a pretty bad punishment for dying, so you want to avoid it. Um, but if you have spare stuff, it'll make going back to your body a lot easier. Now, I'm going to open the door. And just check us out. We've got a bed. I'm going to push E to claim it. So this is our new spawn point. So whenever you build a bed and you want to sleep in it, you make it your new spawn point wherever it is. All right. Now, I'm going to go here and I'm going to push 2. And I want to craft a chest, but I don't have enough wood. So I'm going to push R. And I'm just going to run over here to this tree. And I'm going to chop it down. Now, there's a bunch of trees that I've already chopped down behind me um for example by the way you see how my rested buff is higher that is because my comfort went up in my house when i built the bed so now my comfort is four so i got an extra minute i also got some feathers there as you see from the tree you can kill birds to get feathers or oh god this log wants to roll down the hill and kill me be careful of that you can sometimes get feathers um, when you're chopping down trees, and that's great. Feathers you need for making arrows. Chop, chop, chop. I'm going to get this tree, and I'm going to get all this wood, and I'm going to run over to my house, and I'm going to go to building, and I'm going to build this chest. And I'm just going to build a chest that kind of sits right here outside my house, out the front door. No one could steal from this. It's not a multiplayer game. So there we go. Push R. And now I have a chest where I can store stuff. So for example, if I don't want to carry these seeds around, um, I can just 
hold control and push left click to shift the stuff from one box to another. If I don't want to carry these dandelions, put them in there. Um, if I want to put away this bad torch and only have the good torch, there you go. Stuff like that. And so there we go, everybody. We have a workbench with a shed. We have a little teeny house that we've built with a, a bed. We talked about many, many aspects of the early game. Now, if you think this house is too small, remember, you get all of your ingredients back when you break something. So just break it and expand it. That's what I do all the time. If I need a bigger house, I just knock down a few walls and extend it. I'm going to go ahead um, and stand in my house. You can see my comfort is indeed four and get my rested buff back and say, everyone, I think this is a good place to end our first episode of the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Would you like to see more of this series? Do you want to see me go further and explain more of the game? I plan to, but I'm curious if anyone is finding this helpful or interesting. Um, and I definitely will make some more to get further in the game. Like I said, I'm not trying to spoil anything. I'm not teaching you the absolute best way to do everything. Just a way to get you into the game. Your house doesn't need to look like mine. Your shed doesn't need to look like mine. Make it however you want. Look how beautiful and amazing this game is. Have fun. Run around the map. Explore. See what this game has to offer. It's tremendous. I'm just trying to explain enough of the basics so that you can enjoy the most of this game and you don't get frustrated by some uh, of the systems that might seem obscure at first. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent evening or day. Take care.